there were like 20 IR lasers all over this guy, all over. I mean, that was some funny shit right there. And he couldn't see him. All right, gents, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. Uh, you know, I talk pros and cons of lasers a lot, visible lasers, IR lasers. Uh, and, you know, the, the reality is, you know, uh, pistol's clear, that there are a lot of people that run lasers. There are uses for them. I got that. But um, growing up through the military, uh, the assault force and everything, uh, the, the modern militaries, they would run... Uh, IR lasers, in other words, uh, infrared, they were not visible to the eye. Right? We ran them on our guns, and uh, the idea was that when you had your night vision on uh, your helmets, you could aim your IR laser and pull the trigger, and you would hit it. You'd get a couple hundred meters with them, which is about all you could identify friend or foe anyways. Um, the PQ-2s, I had an IR illuminator uh, in addition to the IR laser that was kind of like a flashlight that allowed you to identify friend or foe at a longer distance. They were great. We loved them. And then they started coming out with the new generations that had still had your IR illuminator, um, but then it had your IR laser and a visible laser. And we we're like, I ah, ain't never going to use a visible laser. We use the red dot on the gun. We use the... IR uh, laser in the dark, you don't need the visible laser. The one thing we started using it for was because at the factory, it's culminated to that IR laser. So instead of having to wait till nighttime and zero our IR lasers with our, with our night vision goggles, you could zero during the day with your red laser. And then at night, your IR laser was dead on balls accurate because the two lasers uh, red and IR were both culminated at the factory uh, to be on the same path. So that was about the only use we had for them. And I honestly, I, if anybody would have asked me, I would have told you I've never used red lasers, never. And then it was, I want to say it was 2009. We were in Mosul. I was out with the assault force. And uh, we, we hit the target silently. We drove up with our, uh, with our strikers. Salt Force got out, snipers went high, Salt Force hit the target. We didn't blow open any doors or nothing. We were nice and quiet. And we'd had good results with that because the bad guy, if we captured them, a lot of times they would sing like a canary when you torch, oh, that's right, we don't torture, I'm sorry. When we tactically questioned them, they would let us know where their boss was. He might just be two blocks away. So by not blowing open the doors, we we're then able to flex to the to the uh, boss's house, roll him up also. Well, this particular night, I came outside and the, the, assault, the assault force is outside. It's probably, probably three, four in the morning, dark out, but you got street lights every so often. Well, I look down the road and here's this gentleman in his white man dress, big beard, walking down the middle of the road, Koran in one hand, twirling his, his prayer beads in the other. He's just walking right down the road. But when I looked at him with the, the uh, night vision goggles on my helmet, there were like 20 IR lasers all over this guy, all over. I mean, that was some funny shit right there. And he couldn't see them. There was IR lasers everywhere, all over. Now, that sounds funny. But remember, I'm, I'm the sergeant major on the scene. What does that tell me? There's 30 IR lasers on this guy. That means there's 29 other guys that aren't pulling security in other directions. I only need one guy to watch him. He's a non-combatant. He didn't have any guns on him. How do you let that guy know? What usually happens is he walks up and gets too close, and then you end up having to grab this guy, or you startle him. Next thing you know, he grabs the barrel of that young Marine or that young Army guy because he's scared. You're pointing a gun at him. And uh, it's happened too many times, tragically, is uh, the Marines or Army guys, they end up uh, scuffling with the guy and they end up shooting the guy off the end of their gun. And now this poor non-combatant, this poor innocent civilian just on his way to the mosque early or to work early, even though he's violating curfew, he's out early, but he's just another one of God's creatures that didn't deserve to die that day. But uh, unfortunately, that's 
what I thought was getting ready to happen. One of my assaulters, he made that red circle on the ground with the red laser. And when the non-combatant looked down at the circle, the guy stopped the red laser and slowly moved it up onto the guy's chest. And when the guy looked down and saw the red laser on his chest, he looked up, big eyes, and there was my assaulter standing under the street light, waving at him, got his attention, and then go away, go away. And you know what the guy did? Huh, he went away. He turned and immediately took a different route to the mosque. And I thought to myself, you know, it's like, you know, that was a textbook use of non-lethal force. Nobody had to confront this guy. Nobody had to shoot him with a beanbag. Nobody had to wrestle him to the ground. All he did was we got his attention with the red laser and uh, visually gave the guy a reason to go away and it worked great. So anyways, um, when you see guys bashing the use of lasers, uh, and me one of them, I'm not a big fan of them for relying just on that, but I have seen reasons where the, the uh, visible lasers are viable in a combat zone. So anyways, it's a technique that I saw work. Uh, if you've never heard of it before, uh, it's one more tool for you guys to keep in your mental toolbox. Anyway, so I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you want to support us, you can check out our Patreon page. Uh, and if you're interested in taking any classes, go to tacticalrifleman.com and you can sign up for classes with me and the rest of the Tactical Rifleman crew. Anyways, that's all we got. Uh, Y'all take care. Shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.